Lance Wallace Memorial Trust and her family, representatives of AIM and uh, our own museum trustees, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Brooklyn's Museum and to the opening of the Barnes Wallace Stratosphere Chamber Exhibition. This is more than an opening ceremony for an exhibition. It marks the opening of a significant new chapter in the history of Brooklyn's and of this museum, which will be more later. But first, I must talk a little about how we've ended up here today at the unveiling of this wonderful new exhibition. The building, of course, has been opened before, back in the 1940s, when it and the extraordinary chamber in which I and my fellow speakers are standing was built as the latest and most capable laboratory tool operated by the Vickers Armstrong's Research and Development Department, headed by the redoubtable Lance Wallace. The chamber, designed by Wallace and built for him by the Vickers Submarine Works at Barrow and Furnace, would enable the R&D team to investigate the potential of hypersonic flight at altitudes of up to 70,000 feet. And remember, this was at a time when newly pressurized airliners were only just venturing above 30,000 feet, and when breaking the so-called sound barrier into the realms of just supersonic flight was still the subject of press headlines. Along the way, the chamber would, of course, be used to test everything from Vickers' new generation of turbine-powered airliners, as you see behind me, to the North Sea trawlers, from bus engines for the Andes to clothing for transpolar expeditions. And eventually, alas, they would fall into disuse, bypassed by newer experimental technologies and the ultimate closure of the factory here. And it became a bit of a problem child for the museum which it inherited. Too important to scrap, too expensive to restore, too difficult to keep pigeon free, it sat here largely unloved and, un and unvisited. Those who visited the education center or aero engine display here, which had joined us in this vast building, might have speculated as to its history and use. And once they had been explained to them, were able to marvel at what it was. But generally, it sat on the museum's pile of things to do, just too difficult to tackle right now, until Sam Hunt of the Association of Independent Museums spotted us on an unrelated visit and urged us to apply for a restoration grant from a scheme about to be launched by AIM and BIFA. Little did Sam, indeed we, realize what he had unleashed. Over the past year, a group of imaginative, committed, and dare one say, hugely generous contractors, especially Eura, Farpost Design, Merlin Electrical, Promo Landscapes, and TW Properties, aided by an extraordinary and dedicated band of volunteers guided by museum staff, have reaped a transformation in this space. It would take me far beyond my allotted half, well, allotted half hour to name them all. Uh, most of them, fortunately, are here with us today and identified by their badges. And it's almost certainly invidious to single out individuals. But here goes with some outstanding examples, anyway. Can I just mention Bob Stace, Keith Roberts, Andrew Lewis, Dick Alder, Alan May, John Pulford, John Charles, Graham Kempton, Julian Temple, Tony Angles. Andy Lambert, Valerie Mills, Steve Devereaux, Robin Boyce, and Peter Vogelman as just a handful of the people who have led this fantastic restoration. I should also mention here some of those who ensured in the past that there would indeed still be a chamber here for us to restore. Principal amongst those must be the museum's founding director, Morak Barton, who, with others like the Science Museum's Neil Cousins, fought to save this chamber from being scrapped nearly 30 years ago. I'd also, we should also thank the late Spud Bora, who worked on and in the chamber with Barnes Wallace and later went on to document its history. And I should also say how delighted I am to see in the audience today Jack Stacy, our oldest volunteer at a mere 98 years, um, who devoted so much time cleaning and showing the chamber off to visitors in the early days of the museum. It's wonderful to see you here, Jack. Now it's my very great pleasure to introduce Mary Stokes Rowe, daughter of the late Sir Barnes Wallace, uh, who's going to say a few words and then 
with our chairman is going to formally unveil the plaque marking the opening of the Stratosphere Chamber. Barry. Falling pressure is recorded on the absolute pressure recorder. 